on the glorious subject of the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. And tonight we're going to cover the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. In the Word of God, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. The Word of God says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healings. We've learned that's plural. Both gifts and healings is plural in the original Greek language. Amen. Verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Well, in our study of the nine gifts of the Spirit mentioned here in this passage, we've covered the three gifts that reveal something, also called the revelation gifts. That's the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. And we've covered the three gifts that do something, also called the power gifts. The gift of faith, gift of working of miracles, and gifts of healings. And now we're covering the three gifts that say something. The gift of prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Now the three gifts that say something are also called vocal gifts, utterance gifts, or inspirational gifts. I've listed them there in your handout. Vocal gifts, utterance gifts, inspirational gifts. Now you understand the Bible does not call them by these terms. These are just simply words that men use to try to de define these gifts so that they will be easier for us to understand. A simple one sentence definition of each of these three gifts is, and I've listed them in your handout, read along with me, Prophecy is a supernatural utterance in a known tongue, a tongue that you understand. Diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural utterance in an unknown tongue, a tongue that you do not know, a tongue you do not understand. An interpretation of tongues is a supernatural showing forth of that which has been said in tongues. Now, in the Word of God, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, says, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Paul said to the church at Corinth, I don't want you to be ignorant about what? Spiritual gifts. Paul was writing under the inspiration, under the unction, under, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. And he, these are the words that God was directing him to speak, to write to the church at Corinth. So God was saying he did not want the church at Corinth to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. And if God did not want the church at Corinth to be ignorant, then God does not, not want the church today to be ignorant about Amen. spiritual Amen. gifts. It, it, it is amazing how much ignorance does wow. exist in the church today about the gifts of the Spirit, especially the two gifts of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of yes. tongues. Yes. And the reason there is ignorance today concerning the gifts is because people do not read the Bible for themselves and find out for themselves what the Bible says about these gifts right, and good, also good. the gifts are not taught from the pulpit in churches so the church has no understanding of the gifts now some preachers who don't believe in the gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues They'll just simply skip over these verses or they'll pretend these verses aren't in the Bible. They will not address them. And then some preachers will be bold and they'll preach against these yeah. two gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues. They'll even preach that tongues is, is of the devil. Right. So you see there is a gross ignorance and lack of understanding in the churches today concerning all the gifts of the Spirit, but especially the two gifts that we're covering tonight and then tomorrow, the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Now let's begin 
to learn about the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. Yeah. When we say diverse kinds of tongues is supernatural utterance in an unknown tongue, what does this mean? Well, diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural utterance by the Holy Spirit in languages never learned by the speaker, not understood by the mind of the one who is speaking, nor is it necessarily understood by the hearer, those that are hearing that utterance, that message, and other tongues coming forth. Now, what is diverse kinds of tongues? It's a supernatural utterance in the Holy Spirit in languages never learned by the speaker, not understood in the mind of the one who is speaking, and nor is it necessarily understood by those who are hearing that message, that utterance in tongues. For example, our native tongue is English. That's the language that we learn to speak. And if English is the only language we have ever learned, then if someone in the church service speaks an utterance or a message in other tongues, that person is speaking in a tongue or in a language that they have never learned and they do not understand what they're saying with their mind and everyone else in the congregation that is hearing that message in other tongues they do not understand what is being spoken because it is in a tongue or a language that they do not understand. Now let's look at the phrase in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10. This is our key passage in all of the study of the nine gifts of the Spirit is 1 Corinthians 12 verses 8 through 10. And the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is found in verse 10. Look at the phrase to another diverse kinds of tongues. First of all, I want you to notice that the word diverse, D-I-V-E-R-S, that word is italicized, which means it is not in the original Greek text. You remember the New Testament it is written originally in the language of Koine Greek. So this word divers, it's in italics in our King James Bibles, meaning that it is not in the original Greek language. It was added by the King James translators. This verse actually reads straight from the Greek to another kinds of of tongues. Yeah. And if you look up the word divers, if you try to look that word up, D-I-V-E-R-S, if you try to look it up in a Strong's Concordance, instead of having a number by the word divers in 1 Corinthians 12, 10, there's simply a blank in the Strong's Concordance. Why? Because you cannot look up the meaning of the word divers in the Greek because it's not in the original Greek text. So why would the King James translators add it here? I don't know why. Unless they wanted to make an already controversial passage of Scripture even more controversial. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's see what Paul himself called the gift of tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, says, And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings. Notice the, the translators of the King James Bible translated it correctly here. Gifts of healings, yeah. plural, helps governments, diversities of tongues. Look at that phrase diversities of tongues. That word diversities, you can look this word up and it means kinds, K-I-N-D-S, kinds of tongues. Now I want you to notice this verse says that God has set some in the church, which makes it difficult to understand how some can say that tongues is of the devil. Come on, sister. Come how on. can tongues be Amen. of the devil and when God himself has set them or placed on, them in sister. the church? Oh, Something good. cannot be of the devil right. and be of God at the same Ooh, time. Now, let's make sure we understand 
Who does this scripture plainly state that has set the gift of tongues into the church? Who? God, God has God set God them God into the church. One more time. Who does this scripture plainly state has set the gift of the spirit of kinds of tongues in the church? God, God himself has set tongues into the church. And you will not read one verse in the Bible that says that God has taken them out of the church. Amen. Some preachers preach that tongues cease to exist when the last of the original 12 apostles died. Amen. Well, no, this verse does not say that God has set some and to set tongues into the church until the last of the 12 apostles died and then he took them out of the church. Is that what this verse says? No, it just simply says God has set some into the church and I'm sorry if you still refuse to believe that the gift of tongues is of God then you'll have to tear this page out of your Bible right. yes. right. until I began to hear teaching on the subject of tongues and until I started reading the Bible for myself to see what the scripture says about tongues I did not believe in speaking in other tongues. And the reason I did not believe in tongues was because I grew up in a denominational church that did not believe in tongues. I grew up in a Baptist church and the pastor, and when I was a kid in that Baptist church, he preached from the pulpit against speaking in tongues. He preached that tongues was not of God, that tongues was of the devil. Woo! And I believed it because I, as a kid, you always think that what the preacher says, it must be true. And I have told some of you the story about as a little kid, my Sunday school teacher, my training union teacher, she taught both Sunday school and, train, and training union in that little Baptist church. She had a tremendous impact on my life. I call her my spiritual mother. As, and as a child, I looked up to her. There was something different about that woman of God. She taught what I realize now was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It radiated from her presence. The, you could visibly see the anointing of God. God upon her countenance. Her face actually glowed. It shone with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know about the anointing then. I didn't know about the visible manifestation of the presence of God upon people. I just knew there was something different about that woman when she stood up to teach the Word of God. And after a few years, her and her family moved back to Georgia. Then they moved to Pensacola, Florida, and she became a part of the Pensacola Revival. And it was probably 20 years later before I saw her again. And when I saw her, I shared with her how she had influenced my life as a child, how greatly she had impacted me, and how I could see that there was something different about her. I could see it on her countenance. And she told me, she said, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I spoke in tongues. And she said, I was so excited and so turned on to the Lord, and that back Baptist pastor hated it. She said that the Baptist pastor stuck his finger in my face, shook his finger in my face, called me by my first and my last name, and said, you better not ever speak in tongues in this church. We don't believe in tongues in this church. Woo! And wow. so the pastor would get up on Sundays regularly and preach against tongues. And I thought he was just preaching it as a part of his sermon, but he was directing it at this woman mm -hmm. who he knew was filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke in other tongues, and he wanted to make sure that he preached to his congregation that tongues was not of God, that tongues was of the devil. So he, until I've heard the truth, about the subject of tongues and until I started reading the scriptures for myself and finding out what the scripture says until I found it out for myself I did not believe in speaking in tongues simply because I was taught that as a child growing up in that Baptist church the preacher preached regularly against speaking in tongues 
So that was the only reason I didn't believe in tongues. And also as a teenager, after Sunday service, we would be home around the kitchen table eating lunch and mom would always have the radio on, on WVSM, 1500 on your dial. And all of the preachers on, on Sunday afternoon would have a 30 minute radio broadcast. And there was one minister who had a radio broadcast every Sunday at the same time. And during this minister's sermon, both the minister and everybody in that room, in that, in that radio station, would begin to speak in other tongues during that radio broadcast. And I would turn to my mother and I would say, Mother, why do you listen to that? You know that tongues are not of God. You know that tongues are not for us today. The Baptist preacher preaches that they aren't. And Mother would always get on to me and she'd always say to me, you must be careful about speaking against anything that is taking place in a service if it is of the Holy Spirit. And I would quickly say, Mother, you know that, that tongues is not of God. Tongues is of the devil. And you hear our Baptist preacher <laughs> preach that almost every Sunday. And besides that, this minister is a woman. And you know that God don't oh, use women in the ministry. <laughs> that which I feared has come upon me. <laughs> As a young adult, I went to a tent revival and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And then God called me to teach His Word. <laughs> Job said, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. So the thing that I feared came upon me. Not only did I begin to speak in other tongues, but then God called me to teach. And I didn't believe in women ministers, and I didn't believe in speaking in tongues. So that which I feared came upon me. Hallelujah! And I've never been the same since receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You see, growing up and not believing in tongues, and believing that tongues was of the devil, I was sincere in my belief, yet I was sincerely wrong. Amen. Yeah. I was ignorant because I had not been taught the truth from the word of God concerning tongues. You know, Paul, the apostle, was sincere in his preaching against Yes. Christians yes, and was. his persecuting Christians, having them arrested, having them put in prison. Paul was sincere in his beliefs, but he was just sincerely wrong. We all have been sincerely yes, wrong right. and Amen. ignorant at times Amen. about some of the things which yes. we believe. Yes. And I believe and I know from the scripture that the Lord will give us grace until we have heard the truth yes. taught on the subjects that we are ignorant about and unlearned about. And the reason I know that is in the book of Luke chapter 12 verses 47 through 48. The word of God says, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more. If we don't know any better on, and have some wrong beliefs out of ignorance, we will not be held as accountable. But once we have heard the truth uh, from the Word of God on a certain subject, then we are responsible and we will be held accountable for it. Yes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required, this scripture says. So let's determine to learn the truth from the scripture concerning the gift of tongues. So let's start from the beginning and let's learn when tongues came into operation. The gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues are for this dispensation that we live in now. Mm -hmm. It's called the church age by yes. Bible scholars. 
all of the other seven gifts of the Spirit that we have studied were in operation in the Old Testament. But these two gifts, tongues and interpretation of tongues, was not in operation in the Old Testament. Why not? As I explained to you in the very first teaching, Bible scholars tell us that it's because the Holy Spirit had not been sent to indwell mankind until Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost where they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit would come upon the Old Testament prophets and they would prophesy and then the Holy Spirit would lift off of the Old Testament prophets but the Holy Spirit did not indwell them. The Old Testament prophets looked ahead in time to our day and they prophesied about tongues. The prophet Isaiah not only prophesied about the coming Messiah in Isaiah 9, 6, you can jot that down, 750 years before the Lord Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah looked ahead in time and he said in Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us his son is given and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the prince of peace the everlasting father all the names that Isaiah prophesied that Jesus would be called but not only did Isaiah look ahead in time 750 years before the birth of Messiah but Isaiah the prophet also looked ahead in time and he prophesied about tongues. Did you realize that? In Isaiah chapter 28 verse 11, the prophet Isaiah wrote, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this wow. people. Woo Hallelujah. The prophet Isaiah hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before the day of Pentecost saw ahead. He yeah. looked ahead down the corridors yeah. of time and he saw the day of Pentecost and he saw the gift of tongues come into operation. And the Apostle Paul quoted from this verse in Isaiah. The Apostle Paul quoted from it in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 21. Paul wrote and said, In the law, which meaning the Old Testament it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me saith the Lord so the prophet Isaiah looked ahead in time and he saw the day when the gift of tongues would come into operation. And not only did the prophet Isaiah see that tongues would come into, into place at a later date, but the prophet Joel also saw it. And the scripture says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, right. let everything yeah. be established. I, the prophet Isaiah was one witness. Now, now the prophet Joel is our second witness in Joel chapter 2 verses 28 through 29. Joel prophesied and said, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Hallelujah. When did this prophecy that Joel spoke come to pass? Peter tells us clearly when this scripture that the prophet Joel spoke was fulfilled. Peter tells us clearly in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 and verses 14 through 18. Peter makes it clear beyond any shadow of a doubt that what has just taken yeah. place called on the day of Pentecost is fulfilling the prophecy that the prophet yeah. Joel spoke. Acts chapter 2 beginning in verse 1 and when the, the day of Pentecost were fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. They began to do what? Speak with other tongues. How did they do it? As the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 14. 
But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken, listen to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that, this is that, this is yeah. that, which yeah. was spoken by the prophet Joel. Who did he say spoke it? The oh, prophet no. Joel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit Hallelujah. upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy yes. and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Peter makes it clear doesn't he beyond yes. any doubt that what has just happened in, in Acts chapter 2 is the fulfilling of the, of the prophecy that the prophet Joel spoke. So the gift of tongues and interpretation interpretation of tongues was not for the dispensation of the Old Testament. The Old Testament prophets looked ahead in time to the church age. Peter said this is that this which is was spoken yeah. by the prophet Ooh. Joel. Look at it. Acts chapter 2 verse 4. What happened on the day of Pentecost? They were all filled. They yeah. were all filled yeah. with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and Pete said, hey, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. So the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues was not for the dispensation of the Old Testament saints. Tongues and interpretation of tongues is for or this dispensation yes. the church age now was tongues and interpretation of tongues in operation during Jesus earthly ministry no because Jesus operated under the yes. old covenant That's right. but what did Jesus say that yes. we as born again believers would do Jesus said that we as born again believers would speak yes. with new tongues. Mark chapter 16 verses 17 through mm. 18. These signs yes. shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall do what? Speak with, with new, new tongues. tongues. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This phrase follow them that believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe. What did we learn that this phrase meant? It means accompany the believing ones. We talked about it when I covered the gift of the Spirit and gifts of healings. It, this, this phrase shall follow them that believe. It means accompany. It means to follow, Come to on, go Jesus. right Come along on. with the believing ones. Jesus said that one of the signs that would follow, that would accompany, that would go right along with the believing ones is that they would speak with new yeah. tongues. And those yeah. who do not believe in tongues try to explain this way by saying that you speak in a new tongue when you get saved because if you used to curse or we in Alabama say cuss if you used to cuss before you were saved when you got born again then God cleans up your tongue and you don't cuss anymore but is that what this verse says no. No, this verse does not say these signs shall follow or accompany them that believe. It. it does not say that they won't cuss anymore, does it? No, it says that they shall speak with new, new tongues. tongues. If you look this word tongues up in the Greek, in the concordance, it means a language. It means a language, and I listed it for you in your handout. This word tongue means a foreign or a strange language which one has not learned but yet is unable to speak as a result of the supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit, particularly in what the New Testament calls the baptism of the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ. And that's the definition from my Spirozodiades, Greek name 
New Testament word study. He is one of the foremost Greek scholars of our day. And he says this word tongues does not mean now that you won't cuss anymore that you're when you get saved <laughs> that you just get your tongue cleaned up. No. Jesus said these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues. This word tongues what means what? A language, a foreign or a strange language that you have not learned yet you are unable to speak in. How can you do it? As a result of the supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit in what the New Testament refers to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah! Yeah. Oh, I love this, don't you? Yeah. Jesus said, these signs shall follow yeah. them that believe. And one of these signs is that you shall speak with new tongues. You shall speak in a foreign or a strange language which you have not learned and yet you are unable to speak as a result of the supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We live in the greatest dispensation yeah. there is. Yeah. The New Testament age. The church age. I want you to jot these scriptures down. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 30 through 40 talking about the Old Testament saints all these Old Testament saints having obtained a good report through faith they received not the promise God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect the Old Testament saints looked ahead to our day the church age and they wanted to experience what we experienced, but they could not. We live in the greatest dispensation there is. Yes, they didn't yes, get to experience right, being right. saved, being born again. They Amen. did not get to experience Amen. the yes. baptism of the Holy right. Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. All these Old Testament saints, they obtained a good report through faith, but they did not receive what you and I received. In the New Testament the church age, the salvation of our spirit and the ability to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We live in the greatest yes. age Lord. of the entire God. world. Hallelujah. Yes. And yet Lord. so many Christians don't take advantage that's of right. it. That's they right. think that when they're born again, that's all there is. There's not any more. But in Acts chapter 2, they experienced more. They yes. experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They all spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So not only did the Old Testament saints look ahead to our day and want to experience salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the... the angels of the Lord desire to experience what you and I yes, can experience. That's right. that's Jot right. the scripture down. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 9 through 12. You need to go back and read both of these passages. I, we don't have time to cover them tonight. I, if I get started on them, I would spend the entire time on these two passages and then we wouldn't get our lesson covered on the gift of the spirit of tongues. But in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 9 through 12, it talks about the angels desire to look into the mysteries of the kingdom of God. What you and I experience as salvation and, and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The, the angels desire to look into what we experience. If you look that phrase up, look into that that word in the Greek is parakupto, parakupto. And it means the angels bend down. It means they stoop over. It means they lean over as to peer within. They look, they desire to look into. It's the same Greek word of, with the apostles, Peter and John, when they went to the tomb of Jesus and found it empty. Oh, they on, leaned man. over, they peered into, and right. Mary, she peered into, she leaned yeah. into that empty tomb, desiring to see what was inside yeah. and found that it was empty. That Ooh. same Greek word, look oh, into. God. The angels desired to look into salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They peer into it. They bend down. They stoop over. They 
look inquiringly at what at you and I when we receive salvation and we when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. They're bending over. They're they're paracuptoing. They're desiring to look into and see what we get to experience that they don't. I can just picture Michael turning to Gabriel and saying, Michael, do you hear those New Testament saints? They're speaking in other tongues. And he says, no, I, I, I'm seeing it, but I'm not, I'm not comprehending it. Wow, they are getting to experience yeah. something that we angels right. only desire to look into, but we'll never experience because we can only speak in the language Glory. that God yeah. himself yeah. Had gave us when he created us. But those New Testament wow. saints, Glory. they get to experience something that you yeah. and I yeah. as the angels of God and as the Old Testament saints never got to experience. That is salvation and the baptism of the Holy Ooh. Spirit with yeah. the evidence yeah. Of yes. speaking in other tongues. Woohoo! Oh, yes. Glory, Glory to God. God. Now, if I don't get back ah. on our subject, we won't finish it. Our subject of <laughs> kinds of tongues. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. We read it a few minutes ago. Let's read it one more time. And God has set some in the church. Who? God. God has his tongues of the devil? No. no. Who put tongues in the church? God. God. <clears throat> And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, plural, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. God yes. himself has set or placed the gift of tongues in the church. Now let's read on verse 29. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Now it should have been translated healing is plural. So make that note. Mm -hmm. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Paul is talking about here the gift of the spirit of divers, which we know divers is not in the original Greek. It is kinds of tongues that we are studying about tonight. The gift of the spirit of kinds of tongues. Paul is talking about the public ministry of the gift of the spirit of tongues in operation in a church service. Some take these verses out of context and say that speaking in tongues is not for everyone. Because doesn't the Bible say do all speak with tongues? Remember Paul is talking in this these verses to the church. He's talking about the church in verse 28. God has set some in the church and then Paul is saying is everyone in the church an apostle? Is everyone in the church a prophet? The answer of course is no. Verse 30, have all the gifts of healings. Paul is talking about the gift of the Spirit, of gifts of healings. One of the nine gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 through 10. And we spent a whole week studying on the gift of healings and then Paul asked do all speak with tongues again Paul is referring to what one of the nine gifts of the spirit the one that we're studying tonight the gift of kinds of tongues and the answer is no not every believer is used to operate in the gift of the spirit of tongues just like every believer is not used in the gift of the spirit of working of miracles the Holy Spirit may not ever anoint you to speak an utterance or a message in tongues in a church service because the gifts of the Holy Spirit come into operation as the Holy Spirit wills, as He chooses. But we can operate in all nine of the gifts because the scripture says that we're to desire spiritual gifts. We are to want to operate in the yes. gifts. And if we don't desire to operate in the gifts, you can rest assured That's that right. the anointing of the Holy Spirit is not going to come upon us to operate in the gifts. We are to desire to operate in the gifts. 
Every believer can receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And when you receive that gift of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, then you are a prime candidate to be used in the gift of the Spirit of, of diversities of tongues in the, in the church service. If you so desire to be used, and I want to be used of the yeah, Lord, yeah, don't you? Yeah, and all nine of the gifts of the Spirit. Every believer can receive the baptism of the Holy yes. Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Every believer can be used in the gift of the Spirit of diversities or kinds of tongues in the public church services. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, Paul said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than all of you do. He's talking about his own personal prayer language of tongues. His own personal time of being alone with God and praying to God by himself. He's talking about Hit the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Paul said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Verse 19, yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that my, by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. So, verse 18, Paul is talking about his own personal prayer language that he received when he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues more than you all. Verse 19, but in the church, now in the public setting, in the public ministry of a church service, he's now talking about public tongues, the message, the utterance of the gift of tongues. And he said, in a church service, it's better to speak five words in his own native language, he says, than if he got up and spoke 10,000 words in tongues. Why? Because if all that a preacher does is get up in the pulpit and speak for an hour in other tongues, no one out in the congregation is going to be taught because they are not going to understand what that minister is saying. A minister is not to speak in tongues from the pulpit unless he gives the interpretation of Amen. those tongues Amen. so that everyone in the congregation can be taught. Otherwise, Paul says, wait till you get home and then do like Paul says, speak in tongues all you want to yeah. when you get home. But in a public setting in the church service it's better to speak he says five, five words, ten words, a few words in your own understanding than to speak ten thousand words in an unknown tongue because nobody's going to understand what is being said. Now the only time that a pastor should say that should speak in tongues if he's not going to interpret is if he says everybody pray. We're going to have a time now right. prayer and intercession. Right. Then yes. everybody can, can yeah, pray yeah. in tongues in their own personal prayer language. It, yeah. it doesn't have to be interpreted because it's a time of corporate prayer, a time of getting agree yeah. into agreement in prayer. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if a minister is up in the pulpit, they are not to speak in, in an utterance in other tongues unless they give the interpretation so that everyone in the congregation can be taught and can understand what that pastor or that servant behind that pulpit has spoken in tongues. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 26 through 28. How is it then, brethren, when you come together? Ah, here's the key. There it is. Here's the key. Now, we're not talking about praying in, in your own personal prayer language at home, in your personal prayer time. Now, Paul says, how is it then, brethren, when you come together? Now, he's going to be talking about in a corporate meeting, in a public church meeting. Every one of you hath the psalm, hath the doctrine, hath the what? tongue, mm -hmm. hath the revelation, hath the what? 
interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three. And that by course and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Now which one is Paul referring to here? Is he referring to your own personal prayer language no. of speaking in other tongues? Or is he referring to the public ministry of the gift of the spirit of tongues that we're studying about in 1 Corinthians 12 verses 8 through 10? Which one did I say he was referring to? Verse 26 says, How is it then, brethren, when ye are come together? Every one of you has a white tongue. So he's talking about in the public church service, and out in the church meeting. He said in verse 27, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, what's he talking about? In a church service, a public meeting. Paul is talking about the public ministry of the gift of the Spirit of diversities or different kinds of tongues. Paul is saying when you come together in a church service, every one of you may say something. Somebody may have a psalm. What did we learn last week that a psalm was? It's a spiritual poem or an ode. It may or may not rhyme, but it'll have an element of poetry about it. Paul said, when you come together in a public church setting, every one of you, somebody may have a psalm. Somebody may have a doctrine. That word doctrine means a teaching. Somebody may have a revelation. Somebody may have a tongue. But if you're going to give a message publicly in other tongues in a church service, then he says that there should be only two or three of you speak, and that by course are one at a time. And when one speaks in tongues in the public church setting, there should be someone there to speak forth the interpretation That's right. That's right. of that message, that utterance that was given in other tongues. Why is Paul saying that only two or three should speak a message in tongues in a church service? So you won't spend the entire church service right. speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, and not have any teaching from the Word of God. Amen. Faith does not come by speaking in tongues, right. by interpretation right. of tongues. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing yeah. the Word of God. And in verse 28, if there be no interpreter, if no one is in that church congregation who is used in the gift of the Spirit of interpretation of tongues, which we'll study tomorrow, then Paul says, while you're in that church service, do not, do not, do not speak forth that message or that utterance in tongues. If there's no one in that church congregation who operates in the gift of the Spirit of interpretation of tongues, but let him speak to himself and to God. Meaning, keep your mouth closed. Right. Don't interrupt the church service with an utterance in tongues if there's no one there that operates in the gift of interpretation of tongues. Wait until you get home and then speak in tongues all you want to. Speak to yourself and to God at home in your own personal prayer language. Now, can you see the difference? Paul now is talking about your own personal prayer language that you receive when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that you can speak and pray in any time you choose to. Do you see the difference? Paul is addressing both the public setting of the gift of the Spirit of speaking in an unknown tongue. And then he says, if there's no one there that operates in the gift of the Spirit of interpretation of tongues, then let that one who has that utterance just keep it to himself. Don't speak it out, but wait until you get home and then you pray in tongues, you speak in tongues all you want to, because when you speak in other tongues, what are you doing? You're not speaking to other people. You're speaking directly to God. Now, look at 1 Corinthians 14, verses 39 through 40. Wherefore, brethren, covet 
That word covet means earnestly desire, covet to prophesy, forbid not, forbid not, do not forbid someone to speak with tongues. Let all things, how many things? All, all things be done how? Decently and in order. Everything that is said, everything that is done in a public church service is to be done how? Decently and in order. So let someone speak forth operating in the gift of the spirit of prophecy don't forbid the speaking of an utterance or a message in other tongues if there is someone there that, that operates in the gift of the spirit of interpretation of tongues everyone can speak Paul says but let it be done decently and in order let someone speak a message in other tongues by the operation of the gift of the spirit of diversities or divers or different kinds of tongues. And then let someone interpret that utterance in other tongues. And he, Paul said that we can all prophesy. Here he's, he's talking about the utterance gifts, the gifts of the spirit that we're studying of prophecy, divers or diversities or kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And he goes on to say, let all things be done decently and in order. It would be pandemonium and chaos if every one of us in here got up and started speaking in other tongues as loudly as we could and an unbeliever walk in the door they're going to think these people are nuts and they're going to turn around and run we, uh, that is not to be done if Paul said let, let the prophet speak let someone have a message in a psalm or a revelation or a doctrine or a tongue or an interpretation let everything be done decently in order let everyone speak let them speak two or at most by three everybody's not to be speaking at the same time trying to out get louder so they can be heard no Paul said everything is to be done decently and in order and when we follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit and operate in these speaking gifts of prophecy, diversities of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Everything will flow according yeah. to the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the church will be edified. Unbelievers that are, are hearing, they, they will say, hey, there's something different Ooh, going on. That must right. be the power and the anointing mm, of God. You. And they'll, it will draw them yes. to the Lord because they will see that it's the operation of the anointing of the Holy Spirit in operation in the church services. We are to to conduct our, our church services everything decently and in order and all nine of the gifts of the spirit that we are studying are to be in operation yes. in the church services yes. in our day all this didn't pass away after the book of Acts on, this sister. is for our, Ooh, day, our on, dispensation yeah. now we get to experience something yes. the Old Testament says we get to experience something that the angels did Themselves oh, experience, yeah. and that is being <laughs> born again and receiving the salvation yeah. of the Holy Spirit yeah. and the baptism of the Holy Spirit yeah. with the evidence of speaking yeah. in other yeah. words, and then yielding to ourselves yeah. to be used by the Holy Spirit in diverse kinds of tongues or diversities of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Yes. The Old Testament Ooh. saints desired it. They wanted it. They didn't yes. get to experience it. Yes. Yes. They bend down. They stoop over. They peer into Ooh. their church services. Ooh. And they say, wow, I wish we could experience my, that. My, my. I wish we could be born oh, again. Sure, sure. I wish we could Ooh. experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Wow. I wish we could experience that. You and I live in the greatest yeah. dispensation that has ever been. To be able to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives us utterance. And to speak forth publicly the message of divers or diversities of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.